Welcome to Dan Really Likes Wine and welcome back to somewhere rather familiar. This is Element House and earlier this year on Dan Really Likes Wine we filmed a few episodes here. It's a beautiful boutique hotel, luxury hotel. It's probably as good as anything we have in South Africa and as good as anything in the world really. Uh, the rooms are wonderful, they're enormous. I had uh, 17 family members stay in one of them with me last year. Uh, the food is terrific, the views over Bantry Bay are superb and as a result you've had some rather well-known people stay here. The Clintons have stayed here, they've been Kennedy's staying here in the past, Oprah Winfrey calls this home when she visits Cape Town. Uh, Lance Armstrong stayed here as well, but we try not to talk about that. Uh, it's just a, a place that is a magnet for people who want to stay in the best spot in Cape Town. And one of the other reasons why it is so celebrated is the wine collection. It's owned by Paul Harris, he's a good mate of mine, not the left arm spinner who couldn't turn a cricket ball, but instead the former banker who now loves playing golf and does an enormous amount for the community. He puts a lot of money into art world, uh, particularly through his Art Angels event that happens here at Element House. In fact, that's why I'm here for a couple of days hosting that event in support of his charity, the Click Foundation. But he's also a lover of wine and here at Element House there, somewhere in the region of 7,000 bottles of wine. And when we did the shows earlier this year, a lot of people gave feedback, what else is in that cellar? What's really special about Element House? So I spoke to a guy called Manny. Manny is the sommelier here. He's from Chile, he's found his way to South Africa, and he's become as passionate about South African wine as anybody I know. And what he loves more than anything is finding stuff that's a little different, a little unique, a little quirky, a little off the beaten track much like himself really. And what he's put together both this week and next week for Dan Really Likes Wine is a selection of wine that he feels speaks to his cellar and what is really at the heart of the wine list here at Element House. So four wines next week and four wines as well this week that celebrate the very best that Element House has to offer. So the first wine that Manny has suggested we have a crack at is this, Tierhook. Now this is not an inexpensive place to stay. It's gonna cost you a lot of money to stay at Element House. So you'd expect every bottle of wine here to cost roughly the GDP of Lesotho. But there are exceptions, very welcomely so. And this I was quite pleasantly surprised to receive from Manny because this is probably an 80, 85 rand bottle of wine. That is not very expensive at all. Uh, it is a Tierhook wine, and this is up in the Picaniers Clough, an area that's just getting cooler and cooler and cooler to drink wine from, and with good reason. Uh, and this is a Chenin Blanc. It's a 2014 Chenin. Uh, they describe it themselves, the owners, as the loneliest vineyard in South Africa. Uh, there's not much around it, but it's really high. It's right up at the top in terms of altitude of South African vineyards. Uh, and that gives it a, a freshness, a purity. It keeps it away from uh, many of the, the scourges of disease that might hit vineyards at a, a slightly lower level. And it just makes it all the more unique. A Tierhook Chenin Blanc from Pekinez Clough. So just a little more information before I give this some analysis. This is properly high, 760 meters. That's the altitude of this particular vineyard. That's higher than Herschel Gibbs on a cricket tour of the West Indies. And the vines are 37 years old. That's way older than me. So there's a lot of history to this uh, and a wine that comes with loads of backstory. But again, it's just 85 Rand and you're gonna to battle to spend 85 Rand better on a bottle of white wine. Uh, the term easy drinking is bandied about far too simply, uh, but that really is exactly what this is. It's a, a, a rich, supple wine, um, lovely creaminess, delightful finish to it, and uh, Chenin Blanc's revival, often with old vines in the room. There's a lot of old vine Chenin going around, and very happily so, some of it's beautiful, uh, and this is uh, exactly that. 37-year-old old vine Chenin Blanc at uh, 760 meters. Uh, the combination at the loneliest vineyard in South Africa has worked extremely well. And if it's found its way into Manny's cellar at Element House, then you can't really get much better an endorsement than that. From a 2014 Chenin Blanc to something a lot older. And the transition here is quite important because it is from a grape that is top dog to a grape that was top dog. Chenin Blanc is now our biggest planted grape in the country but the previous title holder of that title, and certainly the biggest white grape we produced by volume in South Africa, was Semillon. 
and we're kind of in a, if not a slump in semion, then we're not really seeing as much of it as perhaps we're used to. And a single varietal semion not popping up as often, certainly in my experience, as it might have done a while back. And that's a pity because we do make some great semion. And amongst its many qualities, semion does have terrific aging potential. And it's going to be put to the test here because this is from 2000. I think I was about three. At 2000, that uh, makes it a 17-year-old Semillon. Now, you talk to most people in South Africa, a 17-year-old white wine, uh, you're conjuring up tasting notes of Harpic and battery acid and can I use this to get some graffiti off my front wall? But when Manny gave me this, his eyes just lit up. He was a kid at Christmas when he passed this on. He's tested it in the last couple of weeks and reckons it is drinking quite beautifully. And as you'll know, if you've watched enough episodes of Dan Really Likes Wine, old white wine that's been aged and allowed it to grow into its full potential is one of my very, very favorite things to try. There we go. One of the first things you notice about this is the color. 17 year old white wine, you're expecting it to be uh, at best rich gold, uh, at worst almost a burnt orange. Uh, and yet this is neither, it's lighter than that. It's retained a lot of its original hue. Sure, there's a, a little bit of darkness to it, but it's a remarkably light wine in color for 17 years of age. And that then speaks to what you're tasting because I'd never have said this was 17 years old. There's still a freshness to it. There's a lightness to it. There's a, a little burst of citrus that's perhaps not entirely surprising. Stony Brook used to be a citrus farm. The McNaughts turned it around and it's now making uh, small amounts of a, a very fine wine. And this is uh, yeah, 17 years old. It's a, a great example of aging white wine. Uh, Manny, as I said, tried this uh, a couple of weeks ago, said it was still drinking beautifully, and it certainly is. There's a freshness to it, a liveliness to it, uh, that just speaks wonders of why keeping white wine and keeping top South African wine, uh, in this case a really good semillon, is an investment that's well worth making. From a couple of white wines to a couple of reds, and Manny's been really generous here. He's gone into a, a particularly deep and dark corner of the Element House cellar, and he's bought out two wines from 1992, and the first of these, the Saxonburg Shiraz. And both of these were sold at the Niederberg auction, which is always a good sign. If wine makes it through to the Niederberg auction, then it's uh, stuff that is perceived, at least, to be pretty high end. Uh, and this is from an estate, uh, makes the triple S, the Saxonburg Shiraz has been rightly celebrated for some time. Lovely little restaurant out there and a terrific estate. Uh, so 1992, that makes it 25 years old, a 25 year old South African red wine. Uh, that in itself has a lot of appeal. And the question will always be when you're drinking wine of that age, particularly a South African wine of that age, how's it doing? Has it survived the time? Is it drinking at 25 as well as it can? And uh, that's what we'll find out at Element House today. So the first thing you notice again is the color. Last time around with the previous wine, I was expecting it to be a lot darker, a lot more golden, when in fact it wasn't. This I thought might be a little lighter, a little rustier, and it's not. And once again, there's a clue there in terms of what you're going to drink. Uh, with the last wine, it certainly didn't taste like it was 17 years old. It tasted a lot younger, a lot fresher. Uh, and while this has certainly got an aged feel to it, there's no way I would have said this was 25 years old. It's remarkably smooth. There's a beautiful full palette to it and it's aged delightfully. Uh, 25 years ago, uh, think back to what you were doing where you were. I was uh, just starting high school 25 years ago while this particular wine was being made. It's been sitting patiently since then, and it does take a lot of patience and the right wine uh, to keep for 25 years. Uh, but again, rich reward is shown here if you can keep it for that long. Uh, Manny has given us something very generous, and uh, it is quite delightful. And in fact, if you want a really good feel for what this wine is like, I'll give it to you in terms of what I'd serve it with. Normally, if I'm thinking of a Shiraz, it's a, a big rack of lamb, maybe slightly peppered, or a, a nice slab of steak. 
I think I could quite happily serve this with some seared tuna. It's got a lightness to it. Uh, a lot of those more regular Shiraz features have softened a lot. This is almost heading into Pinot Noir territory. Uh, it's uh, smooth, it's light, uh, it's beautiful to drink. Uh, pair this with a large piece of freshly caught seared tuna out on the deck at Element House, and that could be your meal of the year. And then on to the last of the gems that Manny has very kindly provided for us today. Another wine sold at the Niederberg auction. Uh, some Pinotage from Eterweg, uh, from vines that are over half a century old. Oh, they've got history, but so too does this bottle. 25 years old, 1992, the year of the referendum in South Africa to put the dark days of apartheid behind us. Uh, the year Lethal Weapon 3 came out, which I remember with great fondness. Uh, that was the year Bill Clinton came to power. Uh, I think Aladdin came out that year as well. Uh, but in particular, uh, for the purposes of today, it was the year in which this wine was bottled. And as with that Sexenberg Shiraz, which held beautifully through two and a half decades, the onus is on this Pinotage from Eterweg to do likewise. You can see the colour, there's a little more rustiness, it's slightly paler than its predecessor, but it's still looking in pretty robust health simply based on the colour for 25 years, and I'm hoping that that's a sign of what's to come. Mm. And that's done the job very nicely. It's maybe not held quite as well as the Saxonberg, it's not quite as vibrant perhaps, but it's still drinking extremely well and extremely nicely after 25 years. That's a, a great run to have. Probably a good time to drink it now. I think this is uh, uh, probably as good as it's going to get. Uh, but at 25 years, it's uh, not just uh, a wine in itself that's lovely, but it's also that sense of history as you think back. And I love doing that when I drink an older wine. Where was I when this wine was made? What was I doing? What was I up to? And in 1992, you can think back to where you were, what you were doing 25 years ago. And that's when this wine came about. And I think what's also important to note with this wine, with the Saxonberg and with the Stony Brook, the importance of cellaring it correctly. And it's not easy. Not everybody has a cellar. Not everybody has the space. Not everyone can afford to put one in. Uh, but if you can at least keep your wine in a fairly cool and I think almost more importantly than cool, a constant space, a constant temperature, then you have the opportunity to age wine and keep it in this sort of condition. Granted, Element House have got the finest cellar in the country or thereabouts, and it does make it a little easier, but it at least points in the direction that you want to be heading if you want to keep some wine like this and be able, 25 years on, to raise a glass and say, Eiterfake, thank you. That's lovely. Cheers.